We are WMW Jamaica, formerly Women's Media Watch, and we are volunteers with this organization which has been in Jamaica for 30 years. The situation in Jamaica regarding gender equality is that on paper and in terms of the laws, there is theoretical, official gender equality. But in practice, it's a very different matter. There are a few laws that are not gender balanced or not gender equal or permit gender inequality, but mostly the laws are okay. Um, the situation is that gender inequality is practiced because of social, cultural, religious, historical, all sorts of reasons. And therefore, we have a very active human rights element in our civil society, which keeps uh, the, the, the nation aware that we do have to improve what is going on. And there are indeed some laws that we are still working on, like the Sexual Offenses Act and others, which are ongoingly amended. There are three things that we, we do. We do um, advocacy, we do research, and we do training. We also network with other organizations of like mind and of like activity. Um, you probably want to know what kind of advocacy, what kind of research, what kind of training. Mm -hmm. So throughout the 30 years of our existence, one of the areas that we work around is gender-based violence, which includes all forms of violence against women, but gender-based violence, um, we are using that term. And a project that we are really starting out on is an advocacy project. We're addressing the issue of human, tra human trafficking and particularly the sex trafficking of women and children. And in this project, we are collaborating with another organization, which is a church-based organization in the rural part of Jamaica, which recently completed a film on the issue of sex trafficking of young women. We are now organizing uh, the screening of that film. So we are organizing screenings with schools, with church bodies, with guidance counselors, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, with teacher training college in order to raise the awareness around sex trafficking, in order to get people to understand better the link between gender-based violence and gender inequality and sex trafficking and in order to allow persons to understand what action they can take, well, first of all, of course, how to recognize the signs of sex trafficking or recruitment and what action they can take, what they can do if they think somebody is in trouble. So that's one area that we work in. Another area where we are looking out for the human rights of women is in the media. So there is another project in which we are engaged, which is a regional project in the Caribbean, working with three other Caribbean countries. Um, and our intention there is to look out for the, the rights of the, the women who work inside of the media space, that they have equal opportunities as the male journalists and media practitioners, to also look out for the, the, the public and how the media reports on matters affecting women, in particular, again, gender-based violence, that is not glamorized and that there is serious development reporting, investigative reporting around these, these cases, and that the victim is not blamed in, when reports are made. So when we use the term media here, this project that we're running right now, that we've been running for two year, three years, the regional project, is focusing on the news media. Thank you. And um, how news is carried, how the opportunity for women to give their voices on issues to do with gender-based violence, but also any, any policy issues, any issue that reaches the, 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 the news um, to ensure or to explore whether or not women have the same opportunity as men to make their voices heard. And so what we're trying to do with difficulty, it's a big challenge, <laughs> is to get news media houses in a few countries, including Jamaica, to include gender in their news media, in their national in their policy, policy yeah. in their in their in the policy of that media house, 
And that's very challenging because mm. a media house, a news media house, does not particularly like it when an NGO suggests mm -hmm. that the, an addition needs to be made. So mm. it's, it's, it's tricky. But what we have been using is research data. So this is how the research comes into what we're doing, advocacy, research, and training, because we have been involved in a research project that's actually a global research project that's been running globally for 20 years, which explores the participation or the representation of women and men in news media. It's called the Global Media Monitoring Project. And maybe Hillary, I could indicate that we, we and ensure that our volunteers participate by training us in how to monitor the media. So we listen to specify specific news items, we watch item whether it's uh, on, in, in the ra on the radio, on the television, and also print media. And therefore we are also building the skills and the awareness of, of women to, to be able to do this sort of monitoring. Well, we could, uh, we collaborate with other institutions by well, from, even from the project start. So we may be invited by others, actually. We may be approached by others when they wish to submit a, a proposal for funding because we have been around so long, we have a solid reputation, and a new agency may feel that that will be of value to their situation. In relation to, for example, the regional project, we, we seek to partner with agencies in the other parts of the, the region. So, for example, Hillary, like the the um, the well, there is a, a regional media body that we are seeking now to engage through our our the head of a media house here, and there is also the university which we seek to engage because of their own work in this area. And when we say regional, of course, we're talking about the Caribbean region. Mm -hmm. So, um, in our yeah Caribbean region. So in the regional project, one aspect of the project at one point um, included uh, 12 countries, um, not mostly English speaking, but not all English speaking. Um, now we have, because there's limited funding mm -hmm. and limited human resources, mm -hmm. so we've had to narrow the project down. And currently we're working with Suriname and Barbados and one other territory. Yeah, uh, surely that was one that we have been trying to engage. And in relation to the to the uh, the human trafficking project, we are partnering with, as Hillary mentioned, um, um, a, 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 what would I say? He is he's an individual clergyman who is a part of um, a church community, which which has already been doing work in the area of human trafficking. So that is a particular partnership that was actually encouraged by our funder, the World Association for Christian Communications. So the way we get in touch with others to partner with them varies a lot. It may be an organization mm -hmm. that we have linked with or met through our community work because mm -hmm. we work at the community level, mm -hmm. we work um, at the policy level. Mm -hmm. um, so it may be an NGO, a non-government or a small community organization that we, we have met and we want to work with. That because that organization shares our mission and our concern about gender equality in the media. Or we may work with um, a donor agency where the main partnership is that they are assisting us with funding or other kinds of resources. Mm -hmm. It varies a great deal. So if we move on, for example, to our training, we do training at the community level. This mm -hmm. week, um, we ran mm -hmm. a workshop with uh, members of a, of a women's church on gender-based violence. Um, mm -hmm. We also do training, we run a course at the university, mm -hmm. at the Caribbean Institute for Media and Communications, and we run a course there, we teach a course there, mm -hmm. called Media, Gender, and Development, where we are making the links between the media, what happens in the media, and gender and gender inequality or equality and of course that is part of development in any society so we're making links between the media and gender and development and sensitizing the, the, the future media practitioners so that they may re they may carry out their work with this sort of awareness and help the public to make the links as well we need to reform or review change some of the existing laws 
we need to monitor them mm -hmm. as well because once they may be in place the, the challenge is about getting the compliance because very often the laws don't have much teeth so if you're not there yapping away things will just not happen and the mom the monitoring um, or, or the enforcing of mm -hmm. laws and policies requires a huge amount of human resources mm -hmm. because on the ground or say in law we may have um, um, workers rights laws that don't discriminate between female workers mm -hmm. and male workers but in practice women earn and it's not only in Jamaica mm -hmm. <laughs> you know we may have equal rights for equal I mean equal pay for mm -hmm. equal work but in practice women in Jamaica just like in many other countries most other countries earn far less well less than men in some areas far less than men in some areas just a little less than men but generally across the board women earn less than men and we don't we, and we don't often have the esteem or the tools to negotiate as aggressively as the men do so sometimes it may not even be written into a policy at all that the pay should be different but in terms of the practice it ends up that way. In political participation, mm -hmm. there is no law that, that prohibits either gender from um, participating. Mm -hmm. Absolutely mm -hmm. no laws. So under the law, it would appear that all is equal. But culturally, we expect leadership to be taken on by men. And the, and we do not um, grow girl children and boy mm -hmm. children in the same way. So girls are not encouraged to take on leadership roles, they're not encouraged to speak out, whereas boys expect to be in a position of authority in the household, they expect mm. to be in control, they expect to be dominant, they expect their voice to be heard and to be the only voice that is listened to. Mm. So that there are many, that, so all of that is very dif difficult to monitor and enforce. As, as well, Hillary, as a, as a fact of the, the multiple roles that women are expected to fulfill, the domestic roles as well as whatever the job entails so when she's called upon for example to become a political representative that is absolutely potentially onerous for her as well as the the crime that is sometimes associated with political activity in many countries of the world is quite a deterrent for women so what we have been advocating for over 30 years mm -hmm is for gender awareness training to be included in a school curriculum mm -hmm. from the very earliest stage. Mm -hmm. That is not happening. Mm -hmm. We've also advocated, so because you asked what should be done to change this. Mm -hmm. We need gender awareness sensitization or gender awareness training to simply become part of our educational system. It needs to become part of the way in which teachers are trained. It needs to be the way in which guidance counselors and counselors of any kind mm -hmm. or religious mm -hmm. persons are trained. Mm -hmm. It needs to be something that all our legislators, our judges, our police, mm -hmm. our lawyers um, so need to have that. It needs yeah. to be in every mm -hmm. area of training an educational institution right across the board and not just when you reach the top level, when you're already an adult with your already formed gender ideology. Gender awareness training needs to start from very, very, very early on. So that's one of the areas that we, we can, we've been advocating for. Well, I want to also just introduce the word mainstream, that it becomes a part of the mainstream of the education process of any institution, whether the formal institution or the institutions themselves, as Hillary says, whether church, whether faith-based organizations, political organizations, financial organizations that within the policies of all parts of the society, the, 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 the recognition that women should have equal access and equal opportunity and be given equal value and be compensated should be just a part of everything. And then because gender inequality um, shows up with our very, very high levels of gender-based violence and sexual offenses, um, high rates of sexual offenses mm. against children and that is gender-based gender, gender -based violence is both, a, is both a cause of and gender inequality, inequality and it's a result mm -hmm. of gender inequality 
So something else that we've been very active on is advocating for changes to any of the laws that relate to sexual violence. Um, sexual harassment mm -hmm. is something that is not covered by law in Jamaica. Yeah, although it, it is in other parts of the Caribbean. But not yes, in Jamaica. Not and we have been, mm -hmm. as WMW, we've been trying to advocate for this wow. for about 15 years, mm -hmm. that it should be introduced. Wow. Um, 20 years ago, well, more than 20 years ago, in the mid-90s, 1995, um, the law we enacted, we introduced in Jamaica, um, the domestic violence law, which recognizes that abuse um, and violence mm -hmm. in, the, in, in the home is a very specific kind of abuse and violence mm -hmm. that needs to be addressed by a particular kind of law. So mm -hmm. we, with other, with, with other women's organizations, mm -hmm. from the end of the 80s right into the 90s, we were lobbying for the introduction of that law. And then another another area, for example, policy, not law, but policy in relation to the media um, from um, the late 90s, so that's from 20 years ago, mm -hmm. <laughs> we were lobbying for the introduction of policy guidelines that would restrict the, the, the presentation of sexist, overtly sexist material, sexual stereotypes, gender stereotypes, and violence in um, electronic media, in, well, actually all media, but yes, we, were, yeah. we, were, we were operating mostly with radio and television. And print to some and extent. And print to some extent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And in 2003, um, the Broadcasting Commission of Jamaica, finally, um, after working with all of our women's organizations and others, others such as UNICEF, and UN Women, we were all lobbying mm -hmm. together. We did introduce in Jamaica um, some broadcasting guidelines that, um, it, but it's it's policy guidelines. It's not legislation. So mm -hmm. there's just some areas mm -hmm. um, that we feel that that, that that we can address what mm -hmm. is needs to be addressed mm -hmm. because of the issue of gender inequality. Right now, too, Hillary could mention that we're actually a part of um, a broader group that is seeking to address the matter of abortion in Jamaica, and which is still available only in specific situations, for example, harm to the mother, and um, well, and I think maybe maybe rape. No, not rape? No, not um, rape. Yeah. So, so, so abortion um, is yes. still basically illegal in Jamaica. And we're right now working. No, but those those exceptions are based not. on some based on some research that I was doing for the one of our national agencies. This this is a matter that has been over the years been put forward, hoping to have it formalized. But th these these there were these two two areas that were sort of gray areas, and the intention and the hope now is to have those be formally accepted. So there's actually a, a movement now of which we are participating, seeking our response, seeking us to again present our position on to this. decriminalize yes. mm -hmm. abortion. Not that abortion be available at what's the word on, on demand, demand no. but that the special situations no. be considered. Mm -hmm. So women's roles as mother means that they are not, they don't have the free time. Mm -hmm. They they're not able to earn as much. Mm -hmm. But separately from that. There is, an, a, there is a, if you like, a cultural, societal expectation that men should earn more. Yes. So whether she's a mother or not, mm -hmm. there, will be, there will be employers, mm -hmm. both male and female employers, mm -hmm. who feel that it's okay mm -hmm. to pay the man mm -hmm. simply because we value mm -hmm. man as man mm -hmm. more than we value woman as woman. I was so that is, one, that is one thing. Mm -hmm. The second, so there's that. Mm -hmm. The second thing is that the traditional areas that women work in, which is service areas, valued are valued less mm -hmm. by society. That is the gender ideology of the society. Mm -hmm. that, one, that the traditional areas where women have skills mm -hmm. and what learn to do traditionally, we don't come out of our mother's belly knowing how to cook and sew and clean and wash. And I still don't know how to do it very well. But that area of service work, nurturing work, looking after people, 
the care economy is paid less than other areas. So when we talk about low-skilled men and low-skilled women, the low-skilled men will still earn more mm -hmm. because what they do is valued more. Mm -hmm. Even though they did not spend more time learning to do whatever it is they do. And and the men who 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 move across into the so-called female areas, very interestingly, they sometimes are compensated more. So we've I've had situations where I have been a part of um, society communities where very wealthy communities where the, the women men are employed to do housework. Those men are paid more than the woman who is doing the same housework. I was at a I was at a conference just about two months ago looking at women's economic empowerment um, where there was a, there's a company here, it's a global company, Nestle Jamaica, um, it's, it's global, where they, they actually now are putting in place uh, paternity leave and they call it parental leave so that even persons who have adopted children can have access as well to this and I thought that was absolutely fabulous. This is a this is part of a project called the Win Win Jamaica which is seeking to get companies, private sector companies to sign on to what they call women's empowerment principles in you know in pushing ahead one of the SDGs, what are the SDGs? Yeah. They, yeah. yeah the goals. Yes, yes so um, I thought that was awesome and they, they, they're, they're really pushing for flexi time and things like that. But the whole thing up when the men come into this, they're taking the responsibility is a part of leveling the playing field.